Hi, good evening, and welcome once again to your favorite Friday evening late night program, Hold No Bars with your truly Manzoon deal. Okay, we're going to continue from where we left off last week, and we're going to have to, each week, update on the issue of elections, elections preparation, and what is happening. The Ghana Elections Commission has been meeting uh, a couple of times since that decision by the judiciary last Thursday. And today, the People's Progressive Party issued its press statement. And I want to read that press statement, and then I will do a bit of introspection of the statement, and also we're going to open to you because, to your comments, because we need to continue to educate our people about all of the shenanigans being played out by the coalition government representatives at Chicom. And this is, I'll read this statement, it's quite long, so bear with me this evening. And I'm quoting here from the PPP press statement. Another week has passed, but still there is no clarity from the Ghana Elections Commission in respect of a likely date for early elections. Remember, GCOM has to advise His Excellency, our dear President Brigadier General David Arthur Granger, on the timeline that he could use to announce the date. The President, His Excellency, our dear, David Arthur Granger is the only person to announce the date. He is, albeit at this very moment, today being the 23rd of August, five months and two days behind naming a date. But, so while I continue with the press statement, while GCOM procrastinates, the nation is becoming more frustrated and impatient. Despite the clear pronouncements from the Chief Justice that elections were constitutionally due since the 21st of March 2019 and that the house-to-house -house registration can neither result in the creation of a new National Register of Registrants database, nor can it be used to remove the names of persons already registered. The government nominated commissioners continue to irrationally argue at the commission meetings that the data generated by this exercise must be used. I continue with the PPP statement. We have already pointed out that this data is deeply flawed not only by the sheer speed by which, by which it is being accumulated, but also it is not scrutinized by all the political parties. The wrong registration form is being used and the exercise is being boycotted by tens of thousands of Guyanese. In fact, they are arguing for this data to be used to create a second database. This is what the PNC commissioners are arguing. I continue with quoting from the PPP statement. This is clearly illegal. Duplicate registration is a criminal offense under the National Registration Act. Yet, GCOM is insisting that the house-to-house -house registration exercise continue which results largely in duplicate registration. We take this opportunity to reiterate our calls to every Guyanese to boycott this exercise. We caution enumerators to stop threatening Guyanese who are refusing to participate. We advise the enumerators that to register a person who is already registered is to aid and abet the commission of a criminal offense for which they are equally liable 
as the perpetrators, sorry, as the perpetrators, and that we will report this matter to the police with a request to institutionalize or institute, sorry, criminal charges. We remind Chico that its actions and inactions continue to violate the Constitution. The Caribbean Court of Justice consequential orders and the recent decision of the Chief Justice. We emphasize that GCOM is violating its constitutional duty to the people of this country and is continuing to squander hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars in an unwarranted house-to-house -house exercise. We wish once again, make it clear, we wish to once again make it clear that the PPP will not support any decision or actions of GCOM that will continue to violate our constitution, disrespect the ruling of our judiciary, and perpetrate an illegal government in office. We again call on GCOM to proceed to hold a cycle of claims and objections and to ready the machinery for elections. People's Progressive Party, August 23rd, 2019. This is the PPP statement that was issued today. In this particular statement, they have highlighted a number of things. One, that to register a person who is already registered is a criminal offense. And that the People's Progressive Party will inform the police of enumerators who are violating the law. Second, the PNC AFC commissioners, the coalition commissioners, they continue to insist that there must be a second database using the information that they have collected. They're insisting on that. And we have already had a week and one day since the Chief Justice ruling. Good. The PPP says correctly that tens of thousands of Guyanese have been correctly, have been correctly boycotting this exercise that is engaging in an illegality, that the illegality is registering a person who is already registered. Last week we talked about this, but you know to see them continue for another week, carrying on the same way, the advertisements are still on the air, the enumerators are still going to people's places and threatening them that failure to register is a criminal offense. They're harassing, haranguing the residents. If you have already been registered, the Chief Justice, the judiciary says, you cannot be removed. The Chief Justice also said that GCOM must cross-reference whoever they have registered now and to see that if they're on the database. It means that if they're already on the existing database, that they shouldn't be issued a new identification card. Here is part of the problem. The enumerators are going to your gate and said, come January, here is what they're saying, come January, when we issue the new ID cards, remember this? January, when we issue the new ID cards, you are not going to be able to vote because you would not have had the ID card. They're talking of new ID cards being distributed in January. GCOM enumerators. We are expecting an elections before November, before October. We are, ex we are expecting an election since the 21st of March. GCOM is still going out. The ads are still being played. Total ignoring of the Chief Justice's ruling. The Chief Justice ruling, and there are 40 odd pages of it, says quite clearly, we are in exceptional circumstances. While house to house registration could be used, could be used as a form of verification, meaning that 
to verify that a person ha is on the list. It cannot be used to create a new database. That's the Chief Justice's ruling. Cannot be used to create a new database. And so we have to stay with the old database and we also have to stay with the same ID card that we have. I took out my ID card. I may have left it. That's the ID card with the three pictures in it. But GCOM, the Secretariat, continues to press on, to proceed. And they're saying now they're, they're accelerating the pace of registration. Madam Chief Justice and Chairman, Madam Chief Justice was quite clear in her ruling. Though Mr. Bassett Williams has a totally different interpretation of this clear language, precise and clear language used by the Chief Justice. Madam Claudette Singh, the Chairman of the Elections Commission, has been meeting, and I can understand her honor using a tremendous amount of patience in getting people to continue to express their views, the people meaning the commissioners. I'm sure they're going to be at a stage where once you start repeating the same points, then she say, well, we know that and we need to move on. One of my concerns, though, with the manner in which the GCOM meetings GCOM meeting, the commissioner's meeting is concerned, is that there is a matter of urgency. There shouldn't be meetings happening every three or four days or once a week on Tuesdays as is statutory. This has to be a period of intense, frequent meetings, and the frequency has to be greater than two and three times a week. To all first, to resolve the issue of how to use the data that is being collected in the field. One, do we to examine whether we continue to waste taxpayer dollars and what is a faster way, which is a claims and objections period. You can immediately tomorrow extract from the current National Register of Registrants a preliminary list of electors. You can open up a month of registration in terms of allowing people who have name change, address change, who have not been registered ever, even though they may have qualified years ago, you can allow a period and you can produce in that claims and objections period, you can produce an official list of electors in a matter of four or five weeks and a final a final list of electors two weeks after. So less than two months, you can have an election. You can have an election in less than two months. So viewers, listeners, this is the state of play as we stand. Again, stalemate, some amount of misinformation now and a lot of misinformation, misinformation, I should say, not some, a lot of misinformation is currently being provided by GCOM. It is totally irresponsible. It's negligence now. It's abandoning, abandoning, I consider, abandoning the law. Lowenfield and his secretariat they should have stopped and wait on guidance from the commission. And I'm saying that the commission must meet more frequently in order to resolve the house to house registration and secondly, the issue of preparedness for elections. I saw an advertisement of over 11,000 um, persons need to be recruited for the registration exercise. Law and field is being extremely dishonest, extremely unfaithful to convention and to the law because scrutineers should have been present in terms of perusing the notices 
of these vacancies that are advertised. There must be a system in place so that all the political parties have access to the applicants. All the political parties must have access to the evaluation and be part of scrutinizing the process of evaluation of the applicants. Scrutiny should be present in terms of the interviews. And all, all of the staff, sh those who are being recommended, all of those names and applications should go to the, the commission by the sec from the secretariat. Is this thing impossible? Is it asking too much? Not. We have done that for previous elections. And that was to ensure that there is transparency in the process and that the process is not being guided by bias in favor of any one group of persons. Good? So, scrutineers have been imposed on GCOM as a matter of law, as a matter of law, scrutineers have been imposed on Chico in order that we have first transparency and then that there is accountability. But, you know, I was at a popular barbecue stand over the weekend, gone, and I saw Chico officials ordering quite a lot of food. No problem with feeding the people. I don't have no problem with feeding. I have a problem with feeding the people if they are doing the legal work. So this is the PPP statement today. You ask me again, I will reiterate what I said last week and I've maintained on this program and other programs that the exercise is Illegal, His Excellency President Bayer Chagdi has said it's a colossal waste of resources, and it is. I totally agree with him. And we could have proceeded f with an election at a more rapid pace without jeopardizing anyone who is eligible to be registered and to vote could have been done. As I came here today, I said I should speak about the sincerity of government officials to democracy. I should speak about government officials wanting to build a culture, a democratic culture in our country with rule of law being top priority. Secondly, even if your rule of law is not top priority for you, the moral, the high moral of abiding by your conviction to put your country first and not to hang on to power using every delay tactic at your fingertip, at your fingertip. Earlier this week, I did a program on the correlation of democracy and development. And I made mention of the fact that you have many countries, but the biggest undemocratic country in the world, sorry China, is China. Good? The biggest democracy in the world is India. India and China almost side by side in terms of development. But what you have in China as against what you have that is different in India. In China, you are not allowed to have a different political party going up against the government. In India, you have that freedom. And no amount, no amount of paradise which you put at the feet 
of an enslaved population is going to compensate for the freedom of that mind and person to do as they like, especially electing a government of their choice, or to the smaller unit, electing a representative of their choice. And I said, if you put a bird in a diamond studded cage made of gold, you still have a cage bird. That bird knows nothing about how good you're treating them, that they don't have to scourge for seeds and risk being eaten by predators. But you know what? The bird wants that opportunity to soar, to travel, to be free. No amount of gilded cage and all the best and choicest meat that you feed an encaged lion will compensate for that animal wanting its freedom. You know, and as I was saying, remember the old song, and those of us who are my age and older remember the song, Born Free, Born Free as the Wind, you know, Matt Monroe, really beautiful song. And so, when you look at India and China, they have some parallels in terms of development, but on average, you can't measure the freedom. You can't measure the freedom that is in India to elect the government of your choosing. And if we come close to Venezuela, if we come close to us, our neighbor Venezuela, I should say, Venezuela has the largest proven reserves of oil, over 320 billion barrels of proven oil reserves. Millions of Venezuelans are fleeing as refugees. As refugees. Why? Why? Because they have a repressive government. And in my view, the Venezuelan ambassador might be angry with me. In my view, the election by, Chavez, by um, Maduro has been one that is riddled with inconsistencies and thus questionable. That's my view. In Guyana, where are we today? We are almost at the same junction that we have this government, which a president who should have called elections long before the 21st of March. Then I went back a bit. I'll, I'll free up the lines in three minutes. I went back a bit in history. Well, I'm a bit old, you know, a few, God knows, maybe tomorrow, a few days. But on average, that good book said three scores and 10. Closer to that, just have less than, if I use that yardstick, yeah, less than 8% of the time left. So I've seen a bit. In the early 60s, in the late 50s, you had people from the Caribbean flocking to Guyana. Bajans, St. Lucians in particular, with their own community in Madia, and they celebrate La Rose and La Marguerite Festival. They had you go to Madia, you see the names La Fleur, Saint Auguste, Jean, Jean Baptiste, you know, all those names still exist. They're Saint Lucian names. And if Auntie Sarah is watching this program, or Idar, or Avril, or Mickey, 
or Evred watching this program, these are all Guyanese who have um, strong St. Lucian heritage. The word Nenen, you, when you hear somebody say Nenen, Nenen really is a Patwa word for Godmother. Nenen. Right? And in the yard I grew up in, in Obaizan had a few St. Lucian's family. A neighbor Sarah, Auntie Sarah, who just celebrated her 100th year in November last year. I think Harmon and all of them were there. Unfortunately, I was out of the country, but Auntie Sarah was, I think. But if you talk to them, they will tell you why their parents left St. Lucia and come together. Diana was seen as the emerging paradise, freedom, and so forth. From the early 1960s to 1992, almost a period of 30 years, Guyana was the basket case for the Caribbean. Repression, oppression, struggle for democracy, struggle for free and fair elections. In the meanwhile, while we're struggling for these basic human rights, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica, Antigua and Barbuda of the St. Kitts Nevis all progress. Progress the per capita income almost 5,000 US dollars. The PPP move per capita income from $300 in to almost $3,500. Right? When we had that two decades of democracy taking hold in our country. So there's a strong correlation between democracy and development. And as President Jagdeo said, no amount of money that will flow into this government hands will bring the good life to us. None. It's going to be respect for the law and respect for the wishes of the people in the ballot box. So that's my 11 o'clock. I took half an hour of your time, but I had to say that. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good, e good evening, Manzo. Go ahead. I call, not on a political ground, but I call to tell you all, um, is which councillors are looking after the e echoes. Because, for instance, on Monday, I tried to go into Night Avenue, and it was not a street anymore. It was a canal. Mm -hmm. Good. In Ubani Avenue, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. and if you if you stand uh, or try to walk during the time on the access road, mm -hmm. it appears that the road gets smaller. Mm -hmm. Everybody. I think there are two banks of earth in Ubani Avenue, right? That's keeping the water in. Uh, in the middle of the road, right? Well, I don't know, but here, this, this um, boat street was built in 1966 mm -hmm. by Wicket and Wilson, and the street is still standing. Mm -hmm. All that it needs now is to resurface. So regardless of who's representative, chairman of the NDC, yeah. the Eckers Rambsburg LCC man, come on. You know, we've already had more than eight months of local government elections and us PPP, we have been in charge of this NDC since 2016 fully. So we got to do better than this. I'm making this appeal. And I'll make the call too. Okay, the other thing um, I want to talk about is the main access road. Mm -hmm. When you're coming in, you, like children are so good, they almost got to be walking on the street. There's no park there. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody, which yeah. come almost out. I, I, I don't know if you ever went into Eccles. Chief, I live in Eccles. Oh, you live in Eccles? Yeah. You I live. Well, you, 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 you could see, you could see when yeah. you, even if you're walking, like a rainy day, people got to be walking in the street. And yeah. It's, it, it becomes smaller. And then the other thing is it takes a long time to come off. I know the area well. But they should grade it down, grade down the two banks. You I, know the street? Yeah, that's what I was saying to you earlier. They got the two banks on the street. No, it's not the Ubani Avenue you're talking on the main road. Main road. Yeah. yeah, they should do something. Thanks a lot. Okay, the other point I want to make now. Uh, about two weeks ago, I noticed a minister, um, 
But this this happened to be a long time ago. A minister was behaving in a a, a, a very bad manner. Who is that, Chapman? In the Red House. Oh, okay. It's still that happened a long time. That was a long time ago, yeah. A very long time. But I was also speaking earlier this week about the bullying nature because Raphael Trotman, yeah. he went into City Hall, a statutory meeting of the council, of the Mayan City yeah. Council, and he stopped the meeting because he had a few people from Camp Town area who he took to meet Dimitri Ali, the councillor, the PPP councillor. He stopped the whole meeting. Yes, but now I know to the same individual during the red house time. Mm -hmm. The voice change, they become so polite, they become like, you know, like these, these, um, mm -hmm. I don't want to use the, uh, you don't want to use virginity and all that thing on the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Good. Well, thanks. I know who you're talking about and, um, I use that person as an example of the bullying nature. Right? Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, so all the lines are clear. Let me just check the WhatsApp messages. A few missed calls on the cell phone. Um, so all the lines are open now. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening to you, sir. I just joined your program because we had a blackout. And I always admire your show. Thank you, sir. One question I want to ask Tell you. Tell me. Please answer me yes or no. Could you be locked up by refusing to be registered for this upcoming election? Could you be jailed? If you have already been registered, you cannot be. Right? I was registered since 1992. So you can't I, be. I was one of the individuals who used to carry out registration for, for, for um, Chetty Jagon in Echoes Ramsburg. Mm -hmm. How I got to register again and the people keep threatening you yeah, I know. and jail you. How do they do that? Yes. Tell me. Because they, they're bullies just like the people who are leading them. So you cannot be. You cannot be if you're already registered. I registered since 1992. Let them, let them, let them charge you. We have enough lawyers to defend you. Right? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. That was the only point I would like to clear mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm a pensioner right now. Okay. And they, they're coming in the area and telling you. When you say pensioner, we got three pensions we get in this you. We get three pensions in this country. You know, if you're a government worker at 55, you mm -hmm. get a government pension at 60. If you're qualified, you get an NIS pension. When I'm 59, I had to come off the job working after 38 years with a company. I had to come off because of sickness. Okay. So I'm at home now. Okay. And I'm afraid because they keep telling people, they keep threatening people. Yeah. You must do something like this. Yes. It's not fair. Not fair. Bullies. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Okay. So, yes, we're getting that over and over again. You know, I'd love to hear from more people who would have had these enumerators from GCOM coming to your homes and giving you that kind of uh, Good evening. Good evening, my dear. Good evening. I just want to ask a, a, one question. Sure. The 18th of next month, if we don't have election, what's the next step? Well, as far as we are concerned, mm -hmm. it's not the 18th of elections anymore, or sorry, it's this September anymore, it's the 21st of March. Since the 21st of March, we have had an illegal government. So we're going to have to continue to fight to make them, you know. And the sad thing about it is that they're now putting the blame on Jack Dio. Kamrat Ramjatan, you know, who should know? Um, something wrong with these people, you know. I don't know. They need to go back to school or something. Something definitely needs to. Something wrong with these people, man. If you look at their face, you can see that. Thank A you, sir. Thank you, the government. Thank you, sweetheart. They, they need relax, you know. Thank you very you much. You need to come up and relax, you know. Yeah. But anyhow, you keep up the good works. Thanks, my dear. In fact, I went to a very popular um, barber shop this afternoon, and one young person said to me, you know, um, not only he hasn't done anything for anyone, but he doesn't tell you anything, and he was speaking of the president, that inspires you. Hi, good evening. You're on the ear. Hi, good night. Good evening. How are you doing? Pretty good tonight, actually. Every time I try to get that program, but I am not getting that. You got on tonight. <laughs> I like to say one thing. 
when the government going back, we government, PPP government, mm. I like the pan coconut because you know why? We Indian don't like eat chain rice. Thank you. Okay, so but it's not about race. You know, when bad things happen, it affects every single person, regardless of race, religion, color, whatever. You know, so democracy is for everybody. So I don't think it has to do at all with race. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Okay, if you don't, that's why I permanently have this scrawly handwriting sign up, right? Please turn down your TV volume. Thank you. Right. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Nadir. Good evening. What's going on, my boy? Can't complain, man. You check out, you check out the thing I tell you about Jim Jones and the good life. Why? You, you never get through to it. You never Ac do any research. Actually, I started and I didn't complete. Here, what happened? It might be on Crime of the Century. It was a documentary I was looking at. Uh huh. And I heard that those. Uh, you know, I, I remember I was going to say tonight, the uh, caller who spoke to me about referencing the good life. Yeah, and it was. Why you, why you take it seriously? It's not a joke. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Listen because to you. That man took them into another world to give them the good life. Uh, we got to be very careful here. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> Every stupid uh, you man. Off, you know, you know, let me talk now. Sorry. Uh, here, I think uh, what we have here you now in this country is like. Uh, I feel like we we reverse back into settlement status, you know, like before we got independence in the constitution. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have reversed into that that mm -hmm. status now. We don't need a constitution. We don't need laws anymore. Mm -hmm. We got a chief. Yeah, understand? Right. It looks like we got a chief. Anyway, this this is just the run up. What we're gonna talk about is uh, why would you compile a register, right? Comprising mostly of the constituents of one party, right? And that register that is being compiled by the household registration could probably be the one that has the, two, the 200,000 incorrect entries. And GCOM will be compelled to include it mm -hmm. as a credible list. Right. Uh, on their database. Exactly. And if they, and if they refuse to do mm -hmm. There may be threats of dire consequences. We've had those before. Right. So a bully always enforces illegalities mm -hmm. with the threat of violence if his will is not accepted. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got a second point. Mm -hmm. And remember, you're a retired politician, right? Mm -hmm. So I refer to you or include you in this one, right? No, ma'am, but I still represent politicians, right. so you got to include me. Whether or not talk, I'm, I am why you vexed me. Why are you vexed you? That's why this, this show name, Hold No Bars, is supposed to be Bar No Holes. Ah, right, so you talk right. it as you see it. If you say I'm the most it, it dumb was, politician let, let ever. Let me get that, because I talk about saying. You know, politicians portray themselves as skillful in maneuvering themselves in complicated situations. I don't right? agree. Yet, yet somehow they always manage to put themselves into a situation mm -hmm. or position mm -hmm. in which they do not seem to know the way out. Mm -hmm. So comparing the present status quo mm -hmm. to a game of chess, mm -hmm. it seems like this government has moved into a position of stalemate. You mm -hmm. know chess, right? You play chess. I don't play chess. I don't like the game. But you, you got an idea of yeah. the finisher? No, you go ahead. I'm listening. All right. All right. All right. It seems like uh, uh, people who play chess will know this. It seems like the government has managed to put themselves in a position of stalemate. Mm -hmm. Stalemate means to move before you eat the king. Mm -hmm. So one more move and you eat the king, right? Mm -hmm. So they move themselves in a position of stalemate. And rather to move into check, which is where you eat the king, and rather to move to, into check, they have abandoned the rules. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they have abandoned the game mm -hmm. to avoid a conclusion mm -hmm. which surely will be their nemesis. Right. Right, I have finished. And it looks like the opposition does not have the ability to coerce them to continue playing. Mm -hmm. So maybe a match referee will have to be selected mm -hmm. and employed. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we uh, want to speculate on is Matt Refley. Mm -hmm. This Matt Refley, right, 
Mm-hmm. You should have no vested interest. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, no, but finding a mattress to you with no vested interest mm-hmm. may be impossible. Mm-hmm. Taking the wealth with this country have, which is up for grabs mm-hmm. into consideration. Mm-hmm. And leaving the game in limbo could be an option for the match referee. Mm-hmm. If he, if the principals who control the fast on the sea wealth manages to influence him or her into, into taking their interests also mm-hmm. into the equation. Mm-hmm. Thanks for that, my brother. Thank you. Okay, let me just read a uh, um, observation here from an attorney, a pretty good attorney. I think registering persons who is on the NRR is a crime because it is double registration. PPP has said that also. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to make a point. Now, what I'm saying is this. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is calling, Mm -hmm. right? They are against the coalition. Mm -hmm. Right? But I don't see nothing wrong with the coalition Mm -hmm. because the PPP run this country for 23 years and it did not do as much as the coalition done in four years. Mm-hmm. With Nami. And mm-hmm. all I can see and listening on this television right now is a racist thing and what have you. Okay, so I am introducing that subject you did. Next caller. Right? So we've all been speaking here, the lady who talk about race, I cut her off too. And um, I did make a comment. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening, Mr. Nadia. Good evening. I wish if the caller before this one mm-hmm. but is this race thing in this country. Because race is not, wouldn't care we know we. Which caller you're speaking about? This, this is the second caller that brought in race. There was a lady who brought in about the, shine the, race. The lady. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I agree with you. He wouldn't care we know we. Thank if we don't work together, mm-hmm. we could stay and the same still made that we are right now, mm-hmm. I think finger will add one other. Mm-hmm. And that's my contribution. Thank you. you very much. Have a good weekend. Okay. So we have the lines clear. A couple of persons been calling. And um, let's take your calls in the next 14 minutes. Let's see as many calls as we have. Outside of the developments or the non-developments with respect to the registration process, give you the opportunity to raise anything you want. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Now, what I'm saying is, we, okay, uh, criminal, you love this country so much, right? Why is it that we all don't sit and come together and try to make this country a better place instead of fighting one another? That is not good. Two is like on the point of the medical just no the other one. You understand me? Now, we, the people of Guyana, when I say the people of Guyana, I mean all race in Guyana. In Guyana. Mm-hmm. We are the ones who have to live here on a day to day basis. Mm-hmm. And we have to make it right within ourselves. Mm-hmm. We can't be biting at each other and expect this country to move forward. Mm -hmm. We have to live a life whereby we have to uplift ourselves like what is our country. Mm -hmm. And that is my contribution to me. Thank you. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. A 
Okay, the person wasn't ready. Uh, quite a few calls have been coming through on the cell phone. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. If I get a call on the cell phone, I'll have to go and take that call, right? Because I've been ignoring the cell phone so far. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're on the... Okay. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Radio. What's up? I don't know since when criticizing and pointing out mm -hmm. the illegalities that this government is uh, perpetrating on this country becomes a race, a racial issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a racial issue to you. Not at all. Thanks a lot. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go, go ahead. Hello? I want to tell you that this piano is in good hands. Thank you. The is all right. Great. You, see, you all want to understand. Those people are the highest educated people. So you can understand it all. Mm -hmm. So quit all these things we're going. They, they, they have to stay nowhere in this world tree. You can judge a poorest by two years. They are unconstitutional. Okay, sweetheart, but they're unconstitutional. They may be the best persons for you, but you have to be the best person, but observe the Constitution. And if they're so good, call the elections. Call the elections. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good night. Good, Listen out here. good evening. I think you know this voice is old. This is young Narvada. Okay. Take uh, why Paul, um... I went to Mandir tonight, and some people told me that um, and they're from the government place. They say that um, Barack Obama was more stronger with his protest uh, for hit these people. Uh huh. Yeah, and they said they don't care that they're working with government, but they're looking out for us. Great. Yeah. Good man. Yes. And happy. Um, what's the what's the the observation? I think I don't want to get this wrong, like Pagwali, you know. So um, let me get the right uh, name. All of our Hindu brothers and sisters is Krishna Janamashtami. Happy Krishna Janamashtami. I think it has to do something with the birth anniversary of Krishna. Um, Happened to be in Hardwar, where Lord Krishna was born, and there is uh, one of his footsteps still there in Hardwar, right? Hi, good evening. You're on the well, air. Hi, Mr. Udi. How are you doing? Quite well. Okay. For those people who are saying that President Granger did not have enough time, they should um, compare him with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Just have a look at all the things that Donald Trump has done, uh -huh. good and bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the good, but uh, just they should just compare. Mm -hmm. well, the, the only thing President Greta did for this country was what he's been doing in the past eight months. And that's like running around this country with chickens without heads, mm -hmm. buying votes. Thanks and a lot. The other thing is, I waited a very long time to say this. A sitting president is supposed to be mentally and physically fit to hold office. Mm -hmm. The decisions he's been making for this country. Okay, but that's in, that's going to be your view, right? So, um, if you think that he's unfit, we got to get him certified. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening. You got to load down the TV for me, man. You got to load down the TV. If you don't load down the TV, we're going to get that kind of reception, right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I think CARICOM mm -hmm. and each country need to wake up. Mm -hmm. Still sleeping. Right. They need to wake up and see what's going on in this country. Because people here are terrible. They just teeth it and do what they feel like. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'll try and clear the, the um, every, all the messages. And so this is another one here. Um, good night, sir. Apno FC says better health care and there is shortage of drugs in the hospital. There is so many babies born and they cannot get the BCG injection. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good night, Mr. Nadia. Good evening. You know, when I lay down and I listen to some of these cardio mm -hmm. it beats my heart. Mm -hmm. Look how much money 
the opposition involvement spending we wanted to go to wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. There is no way these people could sit down together mm -hmm. and trust who this thing and stop running all over the court. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying, if this country is for come together, Mr. Nadio, mm -hmm. the opposition claiming that the I contract is bad, mm -hmm. I agree to some point. Mm -hmm. These two people can't sit down and at least get this I contract right. Mm -hmm. This country, we are like Guyanese. And if we don't stop certain things when certain things coming over on these programs, you and other moderators got to stop these people. Mm -hmm. These things that you're always saying is not good for the country. Mm -hmm. These things what someone y'all supposed to say. You don't give a glimpse and a hope that this country, as one people, we don't come together. Mm -hmm. We got to come together, Mr. Nadio. Mm -hmm. And if we never come together, we got so much I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to get development. Mm -hmm. So you mustn't say nothing and allow the illegality to be perpetuated on the nation. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, good evening. Now, <coughs> what the um, other caller talk about um, stealing and stealing. You understand? Now, PPP was here. Uh, when they're talking about stealing, then they put a more trade. Because PPP was there, you understand? And one person had 28 government secrets. The other person had, they stole 20. If you're talking garbage, I won't entertain it, right? And I've done that to other people. So garbage should go in a garbage bin, could go in the back of us as a, the biggest dump site in the country. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, Mr. Nadia. Hello? Yes, good evening, you're here. How are you doing tonight, boy? Pretty good, man, pretty good. Okay, uh, first I must say, um, everybody is saying they want the opposition and the president to work along together, that you have to come together. Don't say everybody, say many persons, because yeah. I don't agree. But then the thing is this, when they sign any contract, they call, they call in Jack Gay for see what's going on? Nah. They don't call. And, and they empower, so they have the, they have the responsibility the moral obligation to be inclusive, not Jack, do you? Yeah, so when, when, they, when they call and say that um, we need to work along together with the, with the president, they don't call Jack, they will say, well, Jack, they will sign in this contract, come and see well, what we could do or what you could say. Nope. They don't do that. Nope. When they don't sign, well, then, then they publish. Well, you, and plus, you just got to wring the hand for expose it, right? Yeah. So you, you see know, how you have to wring Rafael hand to bring the force exam um, yes. contract? Yes, PPP was in power. The, 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 it uh, was a routine thing to lay all the contracts over in Parliament. Yeah, when the coalition government was opposition, they never used to want to walk along with the, mm -hmm. with the, with the, with the, with the, with the ruling government. Mm -hmm. right? So now they want, now they, in power now, they want Jaggi to, to, to be beside them, to work along with them, to what? Mm -hmm. To punish the people in this country? More exactly. than punishing? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we got just about four minutes remaining on the program this evening. Another very informative program and good, aggressive arguments on all sides. Four minutes remaining tonight. Let's get about two more callers. Hi, you're on the air. Penultimate caller. Hello, good night. Good Thank evening. Happy Krishna Janmashmi to everyone and all. Thank you. And especially Abhi Bharat Mm-hmm. And he is Ram, Krishna, Shiva, everything. And God is our richest blessing upon him. They were and we richest blessing upon him. And he will win everything. Altar. Thank you. Um, so that's one caller there. And from our Hindu community. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Okay. So we still have the opportunity to take another caller as we wind down the program tonight. Let me just read a few text messages that came in. Good night. We cannot charge Granger for not conforming to the Constitution. We have to charge Lowenfee. We have to remove him as commission. Well, he is the chief elections officer and the chief executive officer of GCOM. Another, another text says they are not running the country, they are not 
they are ruining, run, sorry, they are running around. That's what they're doing. And the next one says, you people need to stop this nonsense and let the people do what they have to do because the PPP is, wasn't different. Because you and them is the biggest thief. Thank you very much. And so two wrongs, I've said before, um, make a right. Good. So another person posts a picture of a baby and says, 15 days and this baby can get your, uh, BCG vaccine. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. I just can't feel comfortable. I want to know who's in position with you and you can that eat time for something to 15. Uh huh. And you're hearing that he's coming back home here. Can I want to know why he can't come home before election? I don't know, I can't answer that, but what I read in the newspapers is that um, he's still held in the U.S. His lawyer is asking if there is any pending charges against him. And uh, so far, this guy, um, Vice President uh, Ramchatan, says there were no charges. I can't inform you better. And I now like contribution. I have to hold the phone up because this microphone has to pick you up, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, next contribution I want to know. Why it is we can't get out the house registration? Because I know personally that the list is a is a um, valid list. And if we get the elected list now, we can get free and fair election. Okay, that matter has been settled in court and we have already exhausted the one hour. The Chief Justice says you could go and register people, but you got to use the existing database and cross-reference. That's the law. That's the interpretation of the court, and we accept that. Once again, thanks again for having me as part of your hour on a Friday evening. And on behalf of Kevin, the directors of MTV, on my own behalf, we want to thank you for being part of it and wish you a great rest of this Friday evening. Thank you. Have a great weekend.